Yeah, so, um, yeah, my name is uh, Cisco Fauli. I work for the Document Foundation. And, um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't know how to title this uh, talk, so I just say that's coverage in LibreOffice. I'm going to explain. Um, so, a uh, few years ago, I decided, well, like, I found that uh, we had sometimes fixes in LibreOffice that didn't have a unit test uh, along with the fix. And I found after being involved in QA for some years that, uh, yeah, that we had regressions that we fixed and we even have uh, a regression fix and then the same regression happening again. So, uh, yeah. It, it, the pandemic came and I had a lot of time and I, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I decided, okay, I think it's, it's time to uh, learn how to, because I already knew how to write some, some test, but for instance, uh, CPP unit test, I didn't, much, uh, didn't know much about that. So I decided, okay, it's, it's time to, to learn it and try to improve the, test coverage of LibreOffice. So, yeah, uh, the problem I found is that, well, we have, uh, after the project uh, was forked, then we had um, a long list of commits, and uh, it was, for me, difficult to find which, t which test, which uh, fixes uh, had a, a fix, uh, sorry, which fixes had a unit test and which was which uh, fixes didn't have any uh, any coverage or any way to to be tested automatically. So then I started to think about that and I thought, okay, uh, it's hard to, for instance, we have some commits in LibreOffice where the author of the commit or the patch just gives a short explanation of the fix, but if there is no bug ID, normally when you uh, commit a patch, then you normally, if there is a Baxilla ticket related to that, you normally mention it in the, in the commit me message, you say TDF and then the bug ID of the ticket in Baxilla. So yeah, I found that uh, for a th for a third person like me trying to add unit test, it was easier to find those issues in 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 Baxilla because normally you have the documents to reproduce the issue, you have the steps to reproduce the issue. So then I started to think about that, and I came with the idea of creating a script uh, to list uh, all these fixes that didn't have a uh, unit test assigned to them. So <clears throat> for that, well, I, I just used the, the, the log of uh, Git. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna start a random date, but yeah, after the fork of LibreOffice, so I, started, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take the log since uh, the beginning of uh, 2012 and then I'm gonna do it in reverse order. Why in reverse? Because sometimes we have uh, commits fixing an issue, and after that, sometimes we have the, the unit test or the, the, the test covering the, the fix and the fix itself in the same commit, but sometimes it's not the case, and we have um, maybe one after the other, we have the fix, and then we have the unit test, or we, we may have the fix, and after two weeks or one month or some time, we have the, the unit test. So the way to, to, for me to test it was uh, to know if uh, yeah, th there was a, a, a unit test or not, was to do it in, in reverse order, and then, uh, then we look for the pattern. In, well, the, the, the script looks for the pattern, so Normally, nowadays, we use the, the pattern, the TDF pattern, but in the past, we also have this, this FDO or BAC or LO. 
And then for each uh, commit, we check the modified files in that commit. So um, LibreOffice structure in, in folders, it's uh, in a way that um, every module, we have, for instance, SW for uh, writer or SC for calc. Inside these uh, folders, we have a, a subfolder called QA. That's common pattern in all the uh, folders where all these uh, unit tests or yeah, with the, well, all the tests are, are in there. So I thought, okay, uh, I'm gonna look uh, for in every commit for, for the uh, modified uh, files. And then if there is a QA in one of the uh, paths of the, uh, one of the modified files, then I, I, I'll assume that there is a, a, a unit test for, for, for that fix. And if not, then we can, uh, um, yeah, we can assume that there is not a unit test for this uh, fix. And after that, we go to Baxilla and we check with the REST API uh, some parameters like, okay, let's check if the bug is uh, closed or fixed because sometimes there is already a fix in the in the log in 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 in, in Git, but maybe the developer will up, uh, add the unit test after after that. And in this particular case, uh, because uh, testing performance performance issues is kind of difficult, I decided to uh, avoid these uh, issues that we have in Baxilla, which have the keyword perf, perf which means performance, and then. Once we have the list of of, um, of uh, fixes that uh, doesn't have a unit test with them, then we just, uh, the output, we use the media markup for that, and then we just put it in, or, or in my case, I just put it in this website, which I'm going to show you. And the reason I say it's good for history, it's, uh, well, and, and let me show you. So yeah, I'm opening it many times. So <coughs> basically, oh. Um, but now I don't see it here. What? Yeah, so <clears throat> basically this is the uh, wiki page that the script uh, creates. So yeah, basically it says the, the, the this report is created by this script with, which is in, uh, in the LibreOffice uh, core, then bin uh, slash check missing unit test. And then when this report was created, the number of commits that you read it there? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the number of uh, commits that were analyzed since uh, 2012, then the branches master, and the, the, the last uh, commit that was analyzed. So basically, uh, well, what I do is to group the, the different missing unit tests by parts of the, of the code, but now you, we have a, a list of uh, missing unit test. So, and then you have the date where the commit was done, the uh, priority of the of the bug, and then you have the description of the bug, and also you can have a link to this ticket. So then if you want to try to add a unit test for this, you just come here to Baxilla, you read the steps, you have the, the files there. 
So yeah, basically the idea was to have a place where we can list all the all the missing tests that uh, we don't have and try to you know like shorter the the list because uh, for instance if we go to yeah like right there we have for instance for undo we have 36 but then like we have many it goes really long yeah so Yeah. So, just to be clear, um, it's not about all the the code in LibreOffice. I'm just trying to pick some parts, like SW, and then uh, sorting them by the path of the of the files that were modified in the in the fix to group them. But there are still missing parts here which are not, because sometimes it's really hard to f to have a, a test for. I don't know, and, and and I'm also excluding some parts on purpose because there are some fixes like, okay, I want to change the label of uh, a dialogue, then I don't think that makes sense to test. It's just a label and it can be changed anyway, anytime. So uh, yeah, back to the presentation. You see it now? Yeah. So um, yeah, then, now that we have this list, uh, well, if uh, you want to write a test for a specific uh, fix, then some ideas, then you can check. Because you know, you, you, you have the fix of the issue, and then you have the fix of the issue, so you know which uh, files were modified to, to, to fix that issue, then you can check the log for each of these uh, files and see if other fixes uh, containing a unit test are already in in the in the log, so you can already know. Okay, I know this this fix uh, in a similar in in the same file containing this unit test. Then probably the unit test can be similar, so you already know you you have a like a starting point. Then. One question to to ask yourself is, okay, do I need to to write a UI test or CPP unit test? Well, we ha we have other ways to test also uh, in LibreOffice, but right now these are the main ones. And uh, for a starter, then it's uh, uh, well, UI test is uh, basically when you are uh, doing something with the UI, then um, you should write a UI test. The problem is that uh, when it's uh, running Jenkins, it's only uh, executed on Linux, and then we don't have it executed in uh, on Mac or uh, Windows, and they are slower than CPP unit test. But then, in other cases, other than uh, UI, then you should normally use a CPP unit test, and we already have a bunch of uh, test is, uh, test as examples. So then, it's a kind of uh, yeah, it's not that difficult to to write your first uh, test. Yeah. Uh, can you explain in a sentence or two uh, how um, uh, tests which uh, consider the rendering output, like what appears on the user on the user's uh, application screen, can be written when it's not, you know, numeric output in a file or something that you can easily compare in code? Yeah, so uh, basically when you, let's say, open a dialog in LibreOffice, you are using a Juno, a Juno command. So with a UI test framework, you can just uh, call this uh, Juno command, and then it will open the, the dialog, and then you can just uh, get the top windows as a, as a variable, and then you can uh, Examine it like okay. I have this widget, like I have a text text box, so then you can get that uh, text box and see the properties of of it. So that's the way. Let's say you expect to have a text box saying table one, 
So then you just uh, get the properties of this specific widget and you assert that it's uh, the the text in the in the in the widget is table one. Does it? Okay, and I can explain you. And then in, well, I, I'll continue. In, in, in many cases, yeah. So ideally, uh, when uh, a test uh, needs to be written, then the, uh, yeah, it, it, in a way to test that it's uh, properly implemented, uh, well, the, the, the fix should be reverted. So if you write a test, then it passes, and then you revert the fix, it should not pass. The problem is that we are checking fixes since uh, 2012 and reverting a patch from like <laughs> five, say, six years ago. Sometimes it's tricky and difficult, but that's the, the ideal uh, solution, yeah. Basically, I don't know nothing about test strategies like you explain now, but wouldn't it be wise to start backwards in creating those unit tests? Or otherwise, is it is it really a good idea to create something to test a bug fix which is, let's say, eight years old and has no regression since then? So, Or can we just check it and, okay, it works and we don't need we don't need to create a test for that. Yeah, you are right, and that's a good question. And I forgot to mention before, in the website here, when we have the uh, the list of issues, uh, let's say I update it once every month, then I can come here to the history, well, the bear historial, see history, and then if I see the differences between changes, I can see that here in blue, these were fixes added in the last month without a unit test. So now, okay, because for me, it's easier to revert this fix than an eight years old fix. So that's kind of the way to try to Catch up, yeah, exactly. So, but anyway, I I, I I like it. Like I decided, okay, some fixes from the past are also easy to revert. Some of them, like minor issues, uh, fixes. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna like show all the log. But yeah, we could change. Like, let's say we could analyze only the the last three years or four years or one year would make sense. It would the the list uh, would be shorter, but yeah, that's that's a matter of taste. But yeah, you're right, and um, yeah. So uh, in some cases, the the issues are specific to a specific uh, document. So in that case, when we create a, a test for that, uh, the idea the ideal uh, test would have a minimized document because we don't want to, well, if we start, uh, actually when, when you uh, create a patch, there is a, a maximum size of per file of uh, half a megabyte. But yeah, the, the, the smaller the document, the better. And then just uh, if it contains the minimum information inside the document, it's, it's better. And then once we create the commit, uh, then don't forget to, to add the TDF and the, then the ID of the, of the issue. So then the next time the list is updated, it will be gone from the, from the list. And yeah, finally, I have some data here. This is about SW source. So inside SW source, there are few folders. There is one for UI, which I uh, excluded here because as I explained, yeah, in, in many cases, those are cosmetic changes and well, I, I ignore, ignore them. So since uh, 2012, uh, 
2,300, more than 2,300 uh, bugs were fixed. And uh, yeah, we have a coverage of uh, 61%. And yeah, the idea would be to increase it. And ideally, both both uh, charts should go parallel. Or, yeah, together, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, so here, the, the blue one was going like steeper and now kind of the, the orange one in the last year is going a bit steeper. So, well. Then for SC, we have a 57% of coverage. And um, yeah, then SC, SD, sorry, it's uh, around 50%. And then we have other modules which where the coverage it's uh, really good, 85%. And I think yeah, the philosophy here was always to have a unit test and maybe it's because it's easier. I don't know. Like, But it's really good here in this module or in this folder. Same for uh, writer filter. We have 92% coverage. And then, yeah, like this one, it's uh, getting better since uh, 2018, but yeah, still 41%. And yeah, those were just some examples. I didn't want to like uh, use like all the folders in in in, in LibreOffice because I, 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 we could be here for for years. But yeah, those were just some examples I wanted to share. So, yeah, thank you very much. And do you have any question? I don't have a question. I wanted just to uh, give a personal thank you as a developer uh, because uh, having uh, the unit tests that catch up uh, helps us helps my work uh, and uh, helps me to prevent regressions and to, uh, and answering a bit of the previous question uh, well of course uh, please your uh, use your time wisely but if you have time to uh, create a unit test for something from 2012 please do that yeah. Another question? I have one. Are you going to have a question? I have a small one. You you mentioned that you uh, should add the uh, kind of hashtag of the of the bug when uh, when you create a unit test. This means that uh, uh, you are supposed to update on Garrett the uh, no sorry on Bugzilla. No yes on Bugzilla when you create uh, the unit test you you mentioned you you have to. Um, to hashtag the TDF, the number of the bug, where? Well, you have to do it in the git commit. Okay. Yeah. So then once it, the test is uh, pushed to master, mm -hmm. then uh, the Baxilla ticket will get a comment with a notification that there is a, a, a new commit related to the ticket and also for the script the next time is executed, then the, the bucket's gone from the list. Thank you. I don't have a question either, but <laughs> I have a comment that we are also using this missing unit test page for mentoring. So this is a task for people who have done some beginner easy hacks and now are doing some medium level easy hacks. And Cisco is also helping as a consultant in that phase. Yeah, I wanted to add that uh, last year, I think, or two years ago, we had a Google Summer of Code uh, student helping with uh, this uh, will to, to reduce this list, but unfortunately uh, he disappeared in the middle of the project. So, But yeah, but yeah it's what the Elmarie said, that it helps newcomers to get involved as well with more uh, yeah, interesting tasks. And thank you, yeah, bye.